Welcome. This video is on creating an appointment scheduling form in Microsoft Access using no VBA code. I saw a similar database that was built using VBA code and it was very complicated. I'd like to show you a simplified method that accomplishes the same result. When the form opens, you'll see I set this database up for teacher and student for uh, music lessons. It has the teacher name, the start time, their break time, and their end time. So when you put in a date and select the student's name, these are the times available for that day and that teacher, starting at 9 a.m. incrementally for 30 minutes until 4.30, where that teacher ends at 5. And that 1 o'clock break time is also not available. So if I select 11 a.m., it will schedule that student for 11 a.m. And then if you go back to the drop down list, you'll see 11 a.m. is gone as well. So if I select 2 p.m., it says enter student name before selecting lesson time. So we need to select a student. And then we can select, we'll take 2 p.m. Okay, now, when you go back to the drop down list, you'll see 2 p.m. is gone from the list. If we go to an older date that already passed and we try and schedule a lesson it will say the date entered has already passed if we go to today's date you'll see the available times from 9 a.m. to 4 30 p.m. and that one o'clock break time is not there um, well, it's after midnight now so if this person started at 12 a.m. We'll change their start time to 12 a.m. The drop down will start at 12.30 because it's already after 12 a.m. So after 12.30, that 12.30 will be gone. So I'm just scheduling some times here. And you'll see whatever time I schedule will be removed from that available time slot. So we have 9 to 4. 4.30 is taken. 10 is taken. And 11.30 is taken. And that 1 o'clock break time. So as you can see, the list filters out the break time and anything that's already scheduled and anything that's passed and any times that have passed if you're on the current day. So the way I built this was I made a table and just listed all the times with 30 minute increments from 12 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. Then I made a query let me zoom in this where the lesson time is greater than or equal to the form start time and less than the form end time and less than or greater than the break time so not the break time so greater than or equal to this start time not this break time and less than this end time so the result was all the times starting for that teacher schedule ending with the last possible slot because they work till 5 and leaving out that 1 p.m. break time then I made a second query to show the lessons that are already scheduled where the lesson date equals the main form lesson date and the teacher ID equals the main form teacher ID 
which is a hidden field, but it uh, represents the teacher's name. So this one shows anything that's scheduled already. So here are the three lessons you see scheduled here. This is the query to retrieve those. Then I made a third query where I joined the two tables, the two queries, by the lesson time and the criteria is where the scheduled lessons is null. So any of these would be null from the list. And then it was still showing all the times available even if the date was passed or the time was passed if it was this current day. So I created the criteria in this field to equal the time for query on the form. And I'll show you what I did there. Uh, actually, greater than the time for query on the form. And this is what's feeding this combo box. So the query wouldn't work using if statements here. I was getting all kinds of errors. So my workaround for that was to make a text box on this form where if the lesson date equals the date, this field equals the current time. If the lesson date is less than the date, the time value of 23.59.59, that's 11.59 and 59 seconds p.m. If the lesson date is greater than the date, then the time value is going to equal midnight, uh, I'm sorry, 12 a.m., but then that would leave out 12 a.m. because it would show anything greater than 12 a.m. So I did 12 a.m. minus 1 and that includes 12 a.m. to the list. So actually, if I unhide this, I'll set that to visible, save it and view it. Now you'll see if the date was in the past, that's going to display 1159. And it's going to show any times greater than 1159, which 1159 is the last time of the day. So it's not going to display anything. The date entered has already passed. If it's the current day, it's going to display the current time from your system time. So it's only going to show anything greater than the system time. So if that person started working four hours ago, it's not going to show anything until after that time. If it's a future date, it's going to show 12 a.m., which is actually minus 1, but it's still showing 12 a.m. Actually, if I click in this box, that's the actual value it's showing. So it's going to show all the times, but filtered down by the query from the start time, the break time, and the end time. I'm going to rehide that. So I couldn't use that if statement in the query so I just designed it into the form and then had the query greater than that field on the form so this query times three is the actual query for this combo box query one and query two are the setup and then those two are combined into query three which is the result for this box. You can scroll through the records to a different teacher. Um, you can change the times. If, if this person started at 6 a.m. and worked till 6.30 p.m., you'll see the list shows 6 a.m. Oh, and you need to enter a student. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. 
being the last lesson ending at 630. If this teacher worked two PM the lesson start at two PM ending at six PM and again the break time is always missing from the list. No, she started after that break time. That's why there's no one thirty there. So if her break time was three you'll see three is missing from the list. So you still need to build in the functionality for these um, messages to enter the name or that the date is passed. So the way I did that was after update, actually now most of that is the on got focus. So if the decount of the lesson time from query three, that's the query feeding that combo box, is less than one, meaning if it's zero, if there are no times available, and the lesson date is less than the date, being a past date, then message box, the date entered has already passed with the title invalid date, and go to control lesson date. So it goes back to the lesson date because that's what you would need to change um, for another date where you can select a time. If the decount of the lesson time from query times three is less than one, again, and the lesson date equals the date, that means if it's today, so if it's today and there are zero records to display, no availability for today, enter a future date. Go to control lesson date. So again, it'll go back to this control where you can select another date and then requery the combo box. So there is no if statement for the requery. So it's always requerying that combo box when you go to it. That's why when you change a time here, as soon as you requery, uh, click here, it requeries. That's how you get the current list. It updates right away. Same thing when you change the date. Well, as soon as you click here, it requeries the date entered has already passed. Okay, select the future date. As soon as I click here, it requeries, and there's your time. What else was in here? So there was an after update. Okay, so that's what's going to, if the student name is null, it means if you didn't select the name, it's going to set the combo box time to null and display a message box, enter student name before selecting lesson time. If the lesson date is less than the date or the lesson date is equal to the date and the time is less than the current time, Go to control lesson date, set value to the combo time to null, and message box, the selected appointment has already passed. Okay. Aside from those if statements, if none of those are true, it's going to go to control form sub, that's the sub form, go to record new, set the value of the lesson time to the combo box time that's the time that you selected from the drop down set the value of the lesson date on the sub form to the lesson date from the top of the form set the value of the drop down box time to null because i don't like to leave the time in there once it's entered into the form set the value to the uh, combo box student uh, to the student, oh, that's the, I'm sorry, set the subform student um, to the student name from the top combo box. Go to the control combo time just to bring the focus back to the top of the form and set the student name to null. Okay, so once 
it fills in all the information down here I like it to set this to null set this to null and go back to here so the end result without using all the VBA code just using simple queries can populate this list removing the break time and the scheduled times um, very simply uh, of course you have to add some functionality with the macros or VBA um, I hope this was helpful uh, if you have any questions or comments please comment below or message me thank you for watching